This is an F-150 Lightning. It's my not quite a daily driver because I work from home and I don't have to drive every day. It is my official work truck. And while it's my personal vehicle, it's my go-to for when I need to make long distance road trips for this channel. It's my go-to when we need to fill up the back with all kinds of camera equipment. And eventually it's going to be our chase vehicle too. When we finally finish getting our cloud mount set up for the camera that is. It is my go-to when my wife needs to haul more wood or woodworking equipment, when we have a car or a trailer to tow, or when Charlie the rooster needs more feed or bedding. Except, well, according to the internet, it's the worst pickup truck Ford has ever made. It's just cold outside. What? Oh boy, not again. Welcome back to the not quite the dumbest automotive channel on YouTube. I'm Nikki and I've been getting a lot of emails, pings and toots from all of you asking me to talk about this truck and winter range. Some of you want to confirm that my F-150 Lightning Lariat extended range can travel more than 50 miles in winter without running out of charge. Others are convinced that I'm only going to be able to drive down the hill to the shops, but not back up here again. All oh, thanks to Tyler from Hoovy's Garage and his recent video in which he said he was selling his F-150 Lightning standard range because of the fact that he's just been Hey, it, is this thing on? Kate here. Nikki's trying to be nice and reduce her RDA of daily sarcasm, so I guess it's down to me. Hoovy says he decided to sell the F-150 Lightning because of winter range, but let's face it, he's made several videos about the F-150 Lightning and like most, but not all, YouTube channels, he needs a shiny shiny to make drama about. He'd been invited to test drive the Hummer EV, and so half of said video is him getting excited about the Hummer EV, and the drama over if he and the friend he co-owns the F-150 Lightning with will trade it in for the Hummer or not. Again, drama. It all makes sense, n'est-ce pas? Yeah, sorry, back to Nikki. And of course, the giant brain worms are also a good reason to get rid of this while you can. Have you the brain worms? You don't want to know about that. I'm not going to go through Hoovy's video frame by frame, but the too long didn't read here is that he took his standard range F-150 Lightning out to run some errands on a moderately cold day where the temperature was hovering just below freezing to just above freezing. Kind of like today, actually. Having left the truck outside all night with about a three-quarter state of charge and 149 miles of indicated range, Hoovy ran his daughter to school, then took a trip to see the car wizard and returned back home, a total trip of about 64 and a half miles. During that time, his truck's gasometer went from 149 miles of indicated range to 37 miles of indicated range. Ouch. And while I don't know the specifics of where Hoovy lives, he did admit a couple of times things in his video, like the fact that he left his truck unplugged outside at night when the temperature there was pretty cold. He didn't precondition the truck. He also drove at 75 miles per hour for a fairly large part of the trip. That latter bit based on what I could see from his in-car video. There also happened to be a headwind for part of the trip we're told, apparently. And that's where the impressions of the F-150 Lightning in cold weather is left. We're told that Hoovy's friend, who part owns the truck with him, works in the liquor business and has quite a lot of driving to do for work. We're also told that said friend wanted to make use of his F-150 Lightning to make those work-related trips. So, I was curious just how much the truck had been driven, so I watched this video several times and I paid attention to the truck's odometer and then compared it to the odometer in the now infamous Hoovy towing video. 
you know, the one filmed when it was not super hot and it was wet and the F-150 Lightning didn't appear to do its towing duties very well? Yeah, that one. In that video, the odometer reads 1,198.9 miles. And by the end of the most recent video, the winter range one, we're looking at just over 2,600 miles. So 1,400 miles in two months, or about 176 miles a week. Look, that doesn't feel like a truck that's been used to get uh, between a load of different liquor stores for two whole months. And it also doesn't tie in with what Hoovy said in the video about his friend getting frustrated about trying to get said truck charged. In fact, this is the equivalent, assuming we're talking a five day a week job, of driving just 35 miles per day. Of course, what's likely is that said friend tried the truck a few times and gave up, which of course is a very different problem Something just doesn't add up here. To be fair though, Hoovy does read out some of Ford's recommendations on cold weather performance for the F-150 Lightning, and he laughs at them. Um, so he should. There's a recommendation Ford made recently to turn down the heat when using a rapid charging station. Something I'm really surprised Ford decided was good advice. No. But there are some other things that are pretty standard EV advice, which I'll come to in a second, that he admits he didn't do. First though, I want to reflect on one thing that I think exacerbated that range anxiety. Poor UI. In the F-150 Lightning, like the Mustang Mach-E, you can pick at which point you want the truck to start complaining about limited range. Here's a video of me changing it in my truck. You can pick any of these points to alert you to the low range. When towing, I selected 20 miles because otherwise the low range warning came on when the battery was still quite full. But most of the time I leave it in that middle setting. Because this is triggered by remaining estimated miles rather than battery percentage, the less efficiently the truck is being driven, the more quickly you'll see it appear. I've triggered the 50 mile remaining warning before at less than 20% state of charge, but I've also triggered it at a much higher state of charge. That said, there's a psychological fear that kicks in when your low battery warning displays, regardless of what the actual state of charge is. And the F-150 Lightning doesn't default to showing you that on the dash, unless you're in calm mode or using Blue Cruise. And yes, like gas vehicles, EVs do get less range in winter for a variety of reasons. Cold battery packs, denser air, which means more energy is required to push it through the air using heating and non-dry roads. They, they all play a part. But the biggest way to insulate yourself from these problems is to keep your vehicle plugged in when it's cold out. Plugging in and keeping the battery pack warm is the automotive equivalent of putting on your warm socks when the weather outside is frightful. And just like the super cold climates require you to plug your engine block heater in overnight so it doesn't make driving the next day unpleasant or balk your expensive V8, plugging in your EV makes it possible for the EV's onboard thermal management system to keep the coolant it pumps around the battery pack warm which in turn keeps the battery warm. That system will run automatically when required if the EV is plugged in, and if it isn't plugged in, the same system will operate, although often at a reduced capacity. And when that system does run and the vehicle isn't plugged in, it is powered by the battery pack, which will zap some of your range. In the case of Hoovy's truck, I suspect the outside temperature didn't get low enough to trigger that system, but it got cold enough to make the battery a little sleepy in the morning. And just like you don't like working out without warming up first, neither does an EV battery pack like being pushed too hard when it's cold. In fact, if you try using an EV battery pack when it's colder than it likes to be, It'll lose some of its stored energy to resistive losses as it tries desperately to deliver the required charge, which heats up the battery in the process. Preconditioning the cabin, something Hoovy also didn't do, would have also helped. 
I don't want to go all physics 101 on you, but it takes less energy to keep something at a constant temperature than it does to heat it up from freezing to room temperature. So preconditioning the truck from a charging station before departure really helps save battery pack energy for moving the truck along the road. And this is especially problematic for vehicles like the F-150 Lightning, which uses a massive resistive heater rather than a much more efficient heat pump. And while resistive heaters are very efficient at turning all the energy they consume into heat, the heat output per kilowatt hour of energy put in is about one third of that of heat pumps. Again, I don't want to get into the weeds in this video, but let me know if you want us to in a future one. I also know some folks in the comments will be screaming about the fact that internal combustion engine cars don't lose energy heating the cabin. The reality though, is that the heat you use is actually energy that would otherwise be lost as heat. The most efficient internal combustion engines have a wheel to well efficiency of about 27% maximum, meaning that the rest of the energy stored in their fuel is lost, usually to friction and heat. The heat your internal combustion engine car heats the cabin with, it's actually wasted energy. Which by the way, brings me to something here. EVs are, and always will be, your far more energy efficient with energy than an internal combustion engine vehicle is. One gallon of gasoline is equivalent to about 33.7 kilowatt hours of energy. But out of that gasoline, only about nine kilowatt hours of energy is actually used to push you along. If we measured vehicles by the amount of energy they use to go a set distance on that same scale, EVs would be way ahead. Oh, and as I mentioned, gas vehicles also suffer range drops in winter due to changes in road conditions, weather, and air pressure. According to the US Department of Energy, most internal combustion engine cars are up to 15% less fuel efficient when the outside temperature is 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus six and a half degrees Celsius when compared to when it is 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Celsius outside. For short trips of a few miles, which are most trips made by cars in the US, where the engine hasn't got time to warm up, that difference can be as much as 24% reduction in fuel efficiency. You probably just don't notice it though, because you are carrying and wasting a whole lot more energy on board. I suspect by now, some of you are unhappy with the video thus far and want me to give my experiences as winter driving in my F-150 Lightning. Because of all of the reasons I gave earlier on, my truck's winter range does fall a little in winter. The other night I got behind the wheel after leaving the truck sat plugged in for a few days and my truck said it had 200 miles of range from about a 90% state of charge. The last time I'd driven it was in snow and the truck remembered how it was driven which I forgot to mention earlier, may have explained the dramatic change in predicted range for Hoovy because he shares the truck with another driver. But in my case, I left my house at what, we're about 850 feet elevation here, drove down the valley to my local town, off to the local pet store to get food for my dogs, and then I headed to a local dairy farm for some milk. Yes, I buy my milk directly from a local small dairy support your local businesses. I came back home stopping to help tow someone whose gas truck had broken down. Uh, the tow was about one and a half miles straight uphill and I made it back to the house having covered just over 30 miles. My truck said that I'd lost about 29 miles of range. It was just above freezing and while my truck had been left plugged in, I hadn't preconditioned it before I left. I would love to do a real world range test in winter so when the temperature drops down some more i will do my best but until then well, what can i say your mileage may and will vary and like any vehicle the efficiency you experience is just as much a reflection of your driving style how you look after your vehicle and its aerodynamic capabilities as it is for any other vehicle regardless of what's powered by it. Hoon it and you'll pay the price, regardless of if you are wearing summer shorts or a winter motorcycle jacket.
that's it for today. If you liked it, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room, link below. And if you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the link to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links to our Kofi, Bitcoin and swag store and check us out on Mastodon. We have our very own woolly mammoth type server. Scrolling on my right is the amazing list of charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters, Mike Weeder, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Muropian Hero, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tesla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asenta, and Jim Burness. And of course, super mega out of this world supporters. To our orbiting supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. I'll be back soon with more content, as will the rest of the team. But until then, stay warm, keep your truck warm, keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>